The Ontario Federation of Anglers and Hunters proudly presents Angler and Hunter Television. Brought to you by Canadian Tire, Boris Optics, Mercury Marine, and Lund Boats, Yamaha ATVs, Browning Ammunition, Browning Firearms, Suffix Fishing Line, Rapala, Camillus Knives and Cuda Tools, Yukon Gear, Killer Instinct Crossbows, and Outfitter Financial. There's an age-old debate amongst hunters over which rifle caliber is best for whitetail deer. Hunters often claim that the 3030 is the best bush gun, or that nothing compares to a 7mm mag for long range shots. The fact is, a lot of it can be personal choice, or what's most affordable, and it can also be based on the landscape of where you're going to be hunting. In Ontario, where I hunt, there's mostly hardwood forests with beaver ponds and dense conifer thickets set amongst rocky ridges and marshland. A shot at a deer can be from 20 yards to 200 yards. So choosing the right caliber might seem confusing. I've sat at the same stand at my hunt camp for several years. And have taken quite a few deer, ranges from 60 to 80 yards. Well, that couldn't have gone better, <laughs> huh? No. This is what it's all about right here. <laughs> and I've experimented with a few calibers from as small as a 223, a 243, 270, a 270 WSM, and even a 300 WSM. I couldn't be happier. And to be honest, they all drop deer quickly and effectively. The most important part of using a rifle for big game, regardless of the caliber, is to make sure it's sighted in properly. We're going to set this up so it's about an inch high at 50 yards, which will put me high at 100 and zero at 200. Being able to hit a grapefruit sized target from 50 to 250 yards is the key. at the range, fine-tuning your rifle will make the difference when pulling the trigger on a deer. It's pretty much dead center, so I'd be more than comfortable taking that hunting any day of the week now. What does the OFAH do? Since 1928, the OFAH has been the voice of anglers and hunters in Ontario. Its members raise funds and work in communities to support the traditions of fishing, hunting, and trapping. Let's take a look at how the OFAH is making a difference. Hi, I'm August Miller. I'm here with Ben Teske, and he is the OFAH Atlantic Salmon Restoration Program Coordinator. What is an Atlantic Salmon? So an Atlantic Salmon is a type of bony fish in the salmon family, and the salmon family also includes coho salmon, chinook salmon. So how did they go extinct from Lake Ontario? Atlantic salmon are native to Lake Ontario, meaning that they occur here naturally. But in the 17 and 1800s, European settlement came into the Lake Ontario region and there was a lot of deforestation happening, which is the cutting down of forests. And this caused the, the cold water streams to warm up and become really muddy. And, uh, and then also, there was a lot of dams that were built and the dams were built to power mills. And then you add to that overfishing and some pollution, and this fish went from extremely abundant, there were lots and lots of them, to completely gone, which is extirpated, meaning locally extinct, by 1898. So how are we bringing them back? So we are stocking 
We're taking young Atlantic salmon, we're, we're rearing them in hatcheries, and then we're putting them into the cold water streams. And then, of course, we're also educating people so that people will care about the natural world more and uh, we can have Atlantic salmon and we can protect other species as well. So if I catch an Atlantic salmon, how would I report it? So you can go onto our website, which is bringbackthesalmon.ca, and you'll find our contact email there, and you can email us through that. You can also follow us on social media, uh, the Lake Ontario Atlantic Salmon Restoration Program on Facebook um, is, a, is a great way to also connect with us. It's never been more important for youth to get involved and support Ontario's fish and wildlife carrying on the tradition of fishing, hunting, and trapping through conservation. This portion of Angler and Hunter Television is brought to you by Yamaha ATV. There's been quite a few new cartridges introduced over the last few years. They focused on lighter, easy-to-shoot calibers like 6.5mm or heavy magnum-style loads like the 300. Now the factors that go into choosing the right caliber for yourself can be many, but for the most part, whether you're a woman, a teenager, or even a grizzled old veteran, recoil is usually the difference maker. So for me, I'm a big fan of the 270, but it's kind of at the bottom end of what I'd be shooting if I ever wanted to take a long-range shot at a moose or an elk. Sure, a 223 has light recoil, but your shot also needs to be perfect. And a 300 WSM will knock down anything that walks on four legs, but it can hit you pretty hard. So is there a perfect caliber that mixes light recoil with downrange performance for big game? Enter the new 6.8 Western from Browning. When people think of the perfect long range rifle cartridge, they want many key features good precision, flat trajectory, large downrange energy, and manageable recoil. There's many good calibers out there that do many of these things, but none of them combine all into one. So when you take two companies like Winchester, who is a leader in innovation, and then you got Browning, the best there is. You've got a lot of mental horsepower there to come up with one of the best new cartridges possible. We got our engineering teams together first and we just started talking about, look, again, what are those products that are out there today and what are they missing? And then how can we optimize all these characteristics such as a short action, um, heavy bullets, long BC bullets, uh, accuracy. You know, one of the first things for this cartridge was how do both of these teams make the, the rifle system as well as the ammunition system the most accurate we could. This cartridge has been designed to have a very tight throw so as that bullet is in the throat and as the cartridge ignites, it has very little ability to rotate or to can and it enters that rifle perfectly straight. And we've found in our testing that if it starts straight, you know, it stays out straight. All these years, we had finally achieved what we were after. And the key feature in that was to shorten up that shoulder and shorten up the overall length of the cartridge so that we could get longer, sleeker, and heavy for caliber bullets to really drive that G1BC higher and higher to get the flattest possible. It's not overkill for whitetail, plenty for elk. It's perfect for mule deer. So across the board, really the 6.8 Western is really the most versatile caliber that's out there. And it applies and it appeals to every customer out there for uh, for any big game hunting that you're going to be doing. Oh, mule deer, baby, right there. For the 6.8 Western. Dude, look at this old bull. I mean, the 6.8 hammered him. It was like a spin. We good? We ready? Here yes. we go. Wham. I got the chance to try the new 6.8 using a Browning X-Bolt that featured a muzzle brake. Now what better place to go and try the new 6.8 Western than Saskatchewan? 
I'm here in snowy Saskatchewan with Chaparral Hunting Adventures. It's the last week of the rifle season and it's cold. I've got my X-Bolt here. I'm going to be shooting the new 6.8 Western cartridge out of it, hoping to knock down one of those big chocolate racked Saskatchewan monster whitetails. What was the temperature this morning? Did you get one on your phone? Minus 45. <clears throat> What'd you shoot him with? 6.8 Western. New Browning caliber. So we're uh, Turtle Lake, Saskatchewan. Uh, we offer uh, whitetail deer and black bear hunts. For the whitetail hunts, we start at the end of October, run right to the first week of December. And uh, bear hunts, we're uh, we run that through May into the first week of June. Also offer some oh, fishing. Oh, come oh, on! That's nice fish. Oh, Lordy! Are we eating? We're eating. <laughs> on our 130,000 acres that we have outfitting, exclusive outfitting rights on. We have 37 tree stands and anywhere from 12 to 18 pop-ups. And now when I say that is because some of the area we can't access until it's frozen. Chaparral's operation makes sure everything is looked after. The guest lodge has private rooms, big bathrooms, and a common area to lounge and enjoy a coffee, play cards, or watch TV with other hunters in camp. All the meals are home cooked, and hearty breakfasts and gourmet dinners are served in the main lodge. All you can eat ribs, yeah, and get the meat sweats, the way you go. Yeah. Now for me, I was hoping for a first day miracle. It almost looks like a uh, archery target, but it's not. Having a 140 inch minimum on their deer, and with daytime temps reaching only minus 28, things are gonna be tough. There's a rub on this tree, six feet, almost six feet off the ground. Not only did I have to try and <laughs> film the deer hunt, but I also had to make sure my hands were warm and working so I could hold my X-Bolt over a deer at around 100 yards without shivering so bad that I might miss. I've been in the stand for 10 minutes and there's a, a spiker and a decent uh, bucket out there. The one thing about Saskatchewan, a lot of people that see it, um, and, you know, videos and shows about Saskatchewan deer hunting. Uh, you see a lot of deer getting passed up that you, as a, an average everyday hunter like me, would gladly shoot on any deer hunting trip. But um, they have a 140 inch minimum here. Um, so there's only certain deer you're allowed to um, try and harvest. And the deer that I'm looking for is bigger than that guy out there. So um, you basically have to sit and wait and watch for that one deer. And you have five or six days to do it. So I'm gonna watch some deer and hopefully the one that uh, they want me to harvest comes out. My hands are freezing, I'm putting the phone away. This portion of Angler and Hunter Television is brought to you by Minn Kota and Humminbird. Not long after I settled in the stand, the action started to heat up. Seeing these deer is awesome, and it's easy to get caught up with all the activity. Now most of these deer, I would take if I was hunting my own property. That's a pretty good deer. And seeing them posture and control the bait pile was pretty cool. Of course, with my camera's low battery light flashing, something caught the attention of all the deer. A monster coming in from right under my stand. Hoping to get a good broadside shot and also knowing the camera was on the verge of dying made this a pretty stressful couple minutes.
So when I got the chance... That deer definitely humped over and didn't go far. Amazing. The 6'8 Western did its job, and I had this amazing moment having taken down such a magnificent deer. Okay, so it looks like uh, my Saskatchewan hunt is going to come to an abrupt end. Uh, minus 29, I think, is the high today. It's about uh, 1130. I've been in the stand for you know a few hours, and I just pulled the trigger on a big old beauty chocolate Saskatchewan buck. And if my eyes are working properly, at least were, and not frozen, uh, it's the uh, it's the one that I was supposed to shoot <laughs> with any luck. Um, but regardless, it's a, it's a big deer, um, much bigger than the rest of the deer, and uh, a dark rack. My first Saskatchewan deer. I'm pretty excited. The X bolt performed, and um, when we get down and go for a walk, hopefully we find that deer, and um, I can sort of celebrate. The Hunting Edge is brought to you by Browning Ammunition. To get the edge over the deer, I stayed warm and comfortable in the freezing temperatures, wearing Yukon Gear's reversible bibs and parka. A pair of burst binoculars gave me a close look at the bucks downrange, and the Browning X-Bolt Western Hunter and 6.8 caliber 170 grain cartridge made an accurate shot on my deer. Once the guys showed up, it was a short track. All right, let's walk. All right, you want me ahead of you? Yeah, you lead the way. Yeah, we got, we got really good blood right there. He's, oh, he's spraying. He's Oh, I got it. I can see him up there. Yeah, there he is. It was hard. It was hard to say. I had to convince myself on the first day to do it. But you guys said you got good ice fishing, so. <laughs> oh yeah, that's that's got to be the deer, no? Oh yeah. That's that's the guy we call Prince Darkness. Well, it's a beauty. Oh, I'm gonna wrap that boy. Oh yeah, check he, that out. That's one good-looking deer. Really good deer. <laughs> The 6'8 Western did its job, and I had this amazing moment having taken down such a magnificent deer. We want to try to be different. I mean, you can come to Saskatchewan and kill a deer. I mean, there's, there's hundreds of outfitters to kill a deer. We want to try and target the mature bucks. Um, we just want to be a place where a guy can come and hunt a mature buck, 150 or better. You know, uh, that, that's our goal. And, our end goal is to be a place that you can come, hey, and you can honestly say, yeah, yeah, I hunted a 150 or better. Saskatchewan never seems to disappoint, and this trip will be a memorable one for me. My first chocolate rack whitetail, and the start of an awesome relationship between me and my new Browning 6.8. The 170 grain bullet in the 6.8 is fast, flat, and hard hitting and it might just be the ultimate caliber for big game, from deer and bear to elk and bull moose. Closed captioning of Angler and Hunter Television is brought to you in part by Ontario Out of Doors Magazine. Angler and Hunter Television has been brought to you by Canadian Tire, Mercury Marine, and Lund Boats, Yamaha ATVs, Browning Firearms and Ammunition, Suffolk's Fishing Line, Rapala, Camillus Knives and Cuda Tools, Yukon Gear, Killer Instinct Crossbows, and Outfitter Financial. 
For more information on the products used in this episode of Angler and Hunter Television, visit AHTV.com. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Remember, conserve and protect our great outdoors.